Hello, we are back again with another brand new episode of Wonder Beings. In the previous episode, we explained you the detailed process of express entry. So once you get your PR approved, you'll fly to Canada. But what's next? So in this video, we'll explain you two things. One is the landing procedure and second is the necessary and essential things to do in Canada for the first few days. So let's get started. So first we'll explain you the landing immigration procedures. So it has two steps. First one is the verification of your immigration visa by CBSA, that is Canadian Border Services Agency. And the second is immigration interview. Yeah. So you will be asked to fill a form that is a declaration form, which you'll receive either at your flight or even at airport through online kiosk. So you'll be asked to fill the things which you're bringing to Canada. Also, how much amount of money are you bringing? You can bring up to 10,000 Canadian dollars. But if you want to get more than that, then you have to declare it. Or else CBSA has the full right to seize it. Or else they will ask you to pay penalty. After landing, the first step is to proceed to a primary inspection booth where a border service officer will ask you to show your declaration card, your travel document, your identification, etc. And you might be asked a series of questions to confirm your identity and the nature of things, whatever you're bringing here. Don't worry, you will be always properly guided to which queue to stand by the officers around. Also, not to pack your passport and travel documents with your luggage. Always carry it in a separate handy file. So the next step is immigration interview where they will again ask a series of questions and they will also ask for your COPR, passport and proof of funds and some other documents to which you have provided during your PR process. They will keep one copy of COPR and they will return the other one to you. Make sure you will keep your COPR document safe till the point you are staying in Canada because this will be required for availing any programs or benefits you're going to receive your post retirement. The next most important step in the immigration interview is that you will be asked to provide a Canadian mailing address. That is the place where you're going to stay or your friend's place because they will post your PR card to that address. We got a PR card like in three weeks. So make sure you have a proper mailing address prior to landing in Canada so that without any hassle, you can just provide it to the officer and you'll receive your PR card safely. Also, you'll receive a welcome kit that has some informative brochures. That we didn't get. Now we are done with the landing procedure. So the next step is to get the SIN number. What is SIN number? SIN number is a social insurance number. It's kind of an identification number. This is needed to work in Canada and to access all the government benefits and programs. You will be advised to keep it confidential. Usually you can receive the SIN from the airport itself if it is a working day and if you're landing during working hours. This will be available at Service Canada booths at airport. If not, no worries. Get back to your place where you're staying and find a nearby Service Canada location and you'll easily receive it. Now we can proceed to collect your luggage. There are airport taxi services that you can use to travel to the place where you're gonna stay. And make sure not to sleep during daytime because your days might get wasted because of the jet lag. So try to adjust to the new time zone as soon as possible. So the first step is to get your SIN number. If you got it from airport, it's well and good or else you can just go to the nearest service Canada. After that, you have to get your SIM card. You will find a lot of networks like Rogers, Bell, Virgin, Fido. Just talk to them and choose a right plan for you. So once you receive your SIM number and your SIM card, next step is to open a new bank account. So you can do a groundwork on which bank options you have. Here you have CIBC, TD, RBC, BMO, and so many options. So before opening an account, do a homework to know the best deals for newcomers and select the best one for you. Like we did, we opened an RBC account 
and we got iPad 7. Isn't it cool? The next step is to get the Presto card. Over here, they don't have a ticket inspector. So if you are traveling by bus or subway, either you have to carry coins or you have to tap the Presto card. If you're carrying coins, make sure you carry the exact fare or else if you pay like around $5 or $10, don't expect that they will give you the change. So as soon as possible, get your Presto card to avoid the difficulty in carrying all the coins. And I think you're going to get some few cents of discount with the Presto card. You can get this card from Shoppers Drug Mart or at the vending machine at any subway stations. You can fill this according to your needs, like if you want monthly pass, you can do it, or else however your need is. The next step is to get your driving license. Over here, there are three steps for driving license. That is G1, G2, and G. If you want to skip G2, you can just get a driving license extract from your home country. The driving license over here is used also as an address proof. We will explain you in detail in the upcoming videos. Next important step is to apply for the OIP card, that is the health card. For that, you have to visit your nearby Service Ontario. You have to carry documents like PR card, address proof, ID proof. It will take up to three months for your OHIP coverage to bring. So make sure to take a health insurance during these three months because here the doctor visit, medicines, the healthcare as it is very expensive. Very expensive. So now we are done with almost important things to do. Now we'll introduce some benefits you can avail in Canada, like the Ontario Trillium benefits, the GST HST credit, which you can apply through a CRA account, or even you can take the help of any social worker at newcomer services or YMCA or any other organization similar to that. There are also furniture bank, food bank, and charity bed program, where you can just go and apply and you will get this product at very reasonable rate and some are also free of cost. One point to highlight is that whatever we mentioned today is based on our experience specifically in this Ontario province. So in other provinces things might be a little different so make sure to understand that. So do check our description. We have provided some link for your reference. So I hope so you liked our video. If so, do like our video, subscribe our channel Wonder Wings comment your queries and share with all your friends. So till next time, sayonara.